In this next flowchart, we're going to continue our look through the male reproductive anatomy and entitle the flowchart Male Repro System 2. And so the way that we've arranged this look at the anatomical features of the male reproductive system is through basically the pathway that sperm takes. So we've looked at the origination of sperm, which is in the testes, specifically the seminiferous tubules. Then we looked at the storage and maturation of sperm within the epididymis. Then we took sort of a, a pit stop at the scrotum structure to make sure that we understand that it's encompassed outside the body in this sac structure called the scrotum. Now we're going to move forward with our pathway of sperm, essentially. The next path after, let's say, the epididymis, let's say we have an ejaculatory event taking place. What's going to happen is after the epididymis structure has matured and stored the sperm, let's say the sperm needs to be delivered, the sperm needs to be released. The next path it takes would be to go on to the vas deferens structure or go through the vas deferens. That's our next structure in the male reproductive system. Vas deferens is Latin. It means a carrying away vesicle. Essentially what we have here are sperm ducts. That's what we refer to as vas deferens. Sperm ducts are going to be sort of going away from the epididymis, uh, away from the epididymis towards the eventual release point, and that's going to be at both epididymi. So the sperm ducts are going to be there, one from each epididymis. So that's important to remember that there are two of these because there are two epididymi. One from each epididymis. Because there are two epididymis, we need two sperm ducts, and those two sperm ducts are called two vas deferens. Now, what's going to happen essentially is this is going to be a long, another long hollow tube that's going to be from the scrotum structure. That structure is encompassing the epididymis, so of course it's going to be from the scrotum to the pelvic cavity. So it's a, it's a very long structure because we're going all the way internal into the pelvic cavity. This is actually going to be an interesting point in terms of uh, a lot of uh, many f of you as future doctors because this is going to be the site of vasectomy. So vas, that's where the vasectomy part comes from. And then when we're saying ectomy, you know that ecto means on the outside, right? And any ectomy process or procedure is about removal. So this is not necessarily the removal, it's sort of a misnomer of the vas deferens. More so, it's actually the ligation of this structure. Ligation essentially means the tying of the structure, um, more specifically in terms of clinical in clinical uh, relevance, what's going to happen in this ligation event is that you're going to make sure that the vas deferens is essentially closed. You're going to prevent the vas deferens from doing its job and function in the vasectomy procedure in this following manner. When you have a vasectomy, this prevents sperm, this prevents sperm specifically, just sperm, from entering the seminal stream. So the job of a vasectomy, let's finish writing this, is to make sure that there's no more possible, let's say, offspring. What we're trying to do is a permanent contraception. The reason why this works is because the vas, vas deferens is going to be a sperm duct. It's going to carry sperm away from the epididymis storage region and towards a region where we're going to mix with the seminal stream. We're going to get to the seminal stream in just a second, but just know that sperm is essentially first separate from the overall semen that's going to be produced. So in order for us to, let's say, stop the sperm from meeting that, the, that seminal stream, what we're going to do is we're going to stop it from ever traveling away from the epididymis. How do we do that? We cut off, we ligate its path of entry towards the seminal stream. We make sure that the sperm, the thing that causes, let's say, offspring to be produced because of a fertilization event, is never going to reach the structure or is never going to reach the fluid that will eventually be ejaculated because it's ligated at this vas deferens structure, okay? So that's a nice uh, clinical relevant point uh, for many future healthcare professionals that are watching this. Uh, furthermore, the vas deferens is also going to be important because each eventually we're going to empty. Okay, so it's going to be another part, another tube. Remember, I said there's a bunch of tubes involved in the male reproductive system. So as it passes through this long tube, it's going to empty, and it empties into the ejaculatory duct. That's basically our next stop in this pathway of sperm. So we're trying to deliver sperm into the female reproductive tract. We have gone from the storage point, from the maturation point at the epididymis. We've gone through the vas deferens, this long hollow tube, um, the sperm duct essentially, and we're now at the ejaculatory duct. So let's see what happens here. At the ejaculatory duct, which we'll entitle in this next part right here, 
Uh, let me rewrite this. Ejaculatory duct. So at this region, this is where we're going to have the sperm pass through the prostate gland. And we're not going to elaborate on the purpose of the prostate gland just yet. Just remember that a gland secretes, and a gland, this prostate gland is going to secrete important things for the overall semen fluid that's being produced. We're going to talk about the prostate gland and other accessory glands later on, but for right now, after it's passed through the ejaculatory duct, which is, again, just the continuation of this long tube, the vas deferens is a part of this tube, the next part of the tube would be the ejaculatory duct. Once it's passed through the ejaculatory duct and through the prostate gland and other accessory glands, it's going to join at the urethra. So this is the next part of this long male reproductive tube, the urethra. So that's the next stop of the delivery of sperm. So now, if we're at the urethra, let's take a look here. Once we're at the urethra, what we have to just remember about the urethra in terms of anatomical structure is that this is going to be the point at which urine and semen, both of them, both fluids, are going to pass through the penis. They both pass through penis here. So it's a one-way tube in which both urine and semen are going to pass through. And that's going to be important when we talk a little bit more uh, about the accessory glands later on. So now our pathway of sperm, remember, was from testes where we started, then we went to the epididymis, stored and matured, then we went to the vas deferens, to the ejaculatory duct, to the urethra, okay? And now the next logical step is to uh, sort of highlight the penis structure. So this is another structure within the male reproductive system, very important for the overall delivery of sperm. I would consider this the most important delivery structure, whereas the other structures that we've looked at thus far have been important in delivery, but more so uh, a lot of them have been, especially the testes and epididymis, were focusing on spermatogenesis. All of these uh, are definitely involved in delivery, the penis a lot more so than many others. This is going to be the major copulatory organ. This is going to be the organ that's most involved in sexual reproduction. That's what copulation is. So here, what we notice anatomically is that the urethra, remember that's the part of the tube that we stopped at last point where semen was, where we have the sperm that needs to be delivered, the urethra actually runs down the middle of this structure. If you look at that figure 46.9, it's very nicely illustrated there. Urethra runs down the middle of this structure. So what we have here essentially is uh, erectile tissue. We have a lot of erectile tissue that encompasses this organ. Remember, an organ is a bunch of tissue. The specific type of tissue here is called erectile tissue. They're going to be, essentially, if you look at the figure, there are three parallel columns of erectile tissue. These columns are going to be those that are involved in the overall erection process. And that erection process essentially goes like this. We have a stepwise mechanism in which we initially have some sort of sexual stimulation. This is going to be the initial sort of start of the erection process. After sexual stimulation, you're going to have something that we've talked about before. We're going to have a release of NO. What is NO? NO was nitric oxide. And that's going to be specifically from endothelial cells. Remember, endothelial cells are just cells lining blood vessels. Okay, that's why they're endothelial. They're within this structure. And they're going to be lining the blood vessels that are going to uh, go to, uh, that are going to vascularize the erectile tissue. So once we have nitric oxide released from these NO cells, we're going to have another sort of result. Remember, this is a sort of uh, event that's going to be a signaling molecule that causes this next step. They're going to be, that's going to be the fact that smooth muscle, which is involuntary muscle, remember, smooth muscle, smooth muscle in the arterial walls, of this erectile tissue in arterial arterial walls relax. Okay, once the smooth muscle relaxes here in the arterial walls, you're going to then have, remember, whenever you have relaxation in terms of vessels, these arterial vessels, let's say, you're going to have what is known as vasodilation. This is going to be the vasodilation of the arteries. 
Now, once you have vasodilation of the arteries, you're going to then have a great amount of increased blood flow because you're essentially taking this artery, which initially was small in its dilation, and you're causing it to dilate, open up more. And you're then thus allowing a lot more blood to flow through the artery, thus a lot more blood to flow through this tissue, thus a lot more blood to flow through this overall organ. When you have this increase of blood flow at this organ, at the penis, at the erectile tissue, therefore, you're going to have the swelling of erectile tissue. So erectile tissue, which is the sort of structure that makes up the penis, the erectile tissue swells. And then when the erectile tissue swells, you then eventually end up with, and I ran out of space here, but we can just do it over here, the next final step would be the erection. And you need this erection in order to have the copulatory event to be successful. And this all starts with an initial sexual stimulation. So that's our pathway that we see here. Remember, we have this, this second step right here. This is actually where Viagra, and I know we're squeezing this in here, but this is actually where Viagra does its job. Viagra provides nitric oxide, and nitric oxide is going to be the key sort of signaling molecule that causes this whole process to happen. So when you take Viagra, this is going to help increase this release of nitric oxide, and so it promotes the action of nitric oxide, um, allowing for the erection to successfully occur. Now, so that's our basic sort of mechanism of an erection that's necessary for copulation. Um, in addition to this uh, erectile tissue, the penis also consists of the glands penis. The glands is simply just going to be the tip of the penis. And this is going to be where we have many sensory neurons. Many sensory neurons means that it can be easily stimulated and it is well stimulated, and thus this is going to be usually the point at which sexual stimulation peaks and is most, uh, let's say, capable at the tip of the penis because of the many sensory neurons that are going to cause many sensations, many sexual stimulatory sensations at this structure. And then also, finally, there's going to be a structure known as the preptus. This is just the foreskin of the penis, and this is going to be the structure that may or may not be circumcised depending on uh, the belief system, or let's say, of the person uh, that's going to be involved in this decision. This is the site of circumcision. It's called the prepus. It's just a fancy way of saying foreskin. So essentially, we've done through, we've gone through our path of the delivery of sperm. The final sort of culminating thing that we want to mention is that this all results in, in ejaculation. That's the job, that's the sort of culmination, one word to describe the delivery of sperm, an ejaculatory event that's going to occur from the testes all the way to the urethra and the release through the tip of the penis. This is essentially then the way that sperm, the whole point we're doing this is because we need sperm to not only be made, but sperm to travel and reach the female reproductive tract. Ejaculation is essentially the way it does that. Sperm travels from the epididymis from the epididymis through the vas deferens. And then once it goes through the vas deferens, it then of course goes through all the other stops and then eventually is ejaculated. 